Is there someone in your life that you've not been able to forgive because of something that they have said or done to you? Well, forgiveness, that's the topic we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Sip Five Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. So what is forgiveness? How would you define it? Is it allowing someone that has wronged you to get away with their crime by giving them a free pass? Is it something you do because you're a good person and it's just the right thing to do? Do you believe that all people should pay for the pain that they inflict on others? See, I was watching a video yesterday. There was a man named uh, Sammy Rangel and he told his life story. He told about situations where his mom beat him, sent him to school with the bruises. She wouldn't even take him to the hospital to get treatment on the wounds that she had created. And those are scars that he actually has physically today. She made him go without food, walk around the house in his underwear. She wouldn't even let him go to the bathroom. So, of course, there are times that he actually peed on himself, pooped on himself. And as a punishment, she would shove the underwear in his mouth so she didn't have to hear the screaming and crying that this torturous act was creating. Now, him and his sister were actually raped at a young age by their uncle. Now, they told their mom, and instead of her defending him, she made them respect him, kiss him on the cheek when he was around, sit on his lap, and basically act as if nothing had ever happened. Now, I know there's no way that anyone should or could forgive this kind of treatment. At least we would think so. Well, he ended up running away from home, joined gangs, was in and out of prison. Now, he shared a lot of that stuff, including a situation where him and one of his boys, they beat up a homeless guy for no reason. Now, he shared a lot more, including the fact that he thought about killing his mom on a few occasions. Now, I can imagine any human with a caring heart would want to track down his mom with no forgiveness and with vengeance in their heart. Now, his story also reminds me of the movie I saw called Precious. Now, she was molested by her father since the age of three, and her mother actually accused Precious of trying to steal her man. Now, instead of defending her daughter, who was being molested, she was actually upset with Precious. Now, everybody that I talked to about the movie, they took shots at her mom, and they said things like, why would a, a woman take sides with a no good man and not defend her daughter. Now, there was also a part in the movie that most people missed or they chose to ignore where the mom said, the same thing happened to me and no one was there. Now, I remembered, I mentioned this exact same thing in a post one time and a few people got upset with me because their belief system said, we don't look at what got the person to their way of thinking. They should just be held accountable for their actions period. Now, I shared with them that this is the reason we can never heal as a culture, because we refuse to stop and look at what caused these actions and address this in advance so we're not dealing with the repeat of the original action. See, what I saw, I saw a woman that was still in pain, a person that has not yet received any guidance in healing from her past, and she's in a culture that's not willing to give her that support in her current state. So I guess what we should do is discard her and her needs and just ignore her. Now, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm not agreeing with the mom's stance or the situation. I'm just saying that we can't act like she was born as an evil individual. She should be shown no mercy or as the topic we're speaking on today, forgiveness. So back to the gentleman that we started with. He eventually got treatment and the therapist showed him an empty chair and said, your mother's sitting here. What would you like to say to her? He said, I don't want to talk to her. So the therapist had him actually sit in the chair and he asked, okay, what would your mom say to you? The man still resisted because he didn't want to understand where she was coming from. He had no empathy for her. So the man asked him to return back to his chair and the therapist asked him, have you ever heard anyone that didn't deserve it? Now, that man said that was the statement that turned his life around totally. 
he realized that the things that happened in his life took him down a path where he went out and did harm to others. And I hope you can see why I shared the precious story before I told his realization, because that's my point. We as a society are so quick to tear others down, degrade them without knowing their story. Now, I also, I don't know what happened. There was a kid a few years ago, his dad actually threw him in the closet and set him on fire. How would you respond? How would you see the world after someone that supposedly cared for you tried to kill you? Could you trust anymore? Could you forgive? I can only guess that if that kid didn't get guidance and learn to forgive, he's living a life full of pain. Now, I know I share some instances that are truly painful to hear and imagine, but if that young man can learn to forgive his mom, I'm hoping we realize that most of our forgiveness issues can be overcome. Now, before we go any further, let's first recognize our relationship with the word forgiveness. Now, I was listening to a gentleman uh, yesterday named Hassani Pettifort, and he asked five powerful questions that I agree we need to be able to answer. Number one, what's your overall experience with forgiveness? Have you been easily forgiven and do you easily forgive? Have people in your past that hurt you, recognized their wrongdoing and corrected their behavior? Have people in your past apologized only to use it as an escape from punishment and didn't change their behavior? Do you have individuals in your life that you need to forgive? Are that need forgiveness for you. See, it's true. We have to know where we want to go, figure out where we are, and set up a game plan of action to create a new reality. Now, the reason I mentioned that we need to know where we want to go is because he also described four types of forgiveness. Number one, the refusal to forgive. We've all used this one or had it used on us where we know the only thing on that person's mind or on our own mind was revenge, believing they have to be punished for what they've done. That's why I shared the stories. Number two, cheap forgiveness. The conversations where you say, okay, I forgive you. Let's move on. Let bygones be bygones. This is the one where nothing's getting resolved. The situation's being swept under the rug, and we all know it's going to show back up, and usually it's going to be a lot bigger. Number three, acceptance. This is where you don't really want to forgive the person, but you do it anyway. Why? You're a good person. Now, this one's dangerous because the partner or you will become unavailable and the relationship will suffer because we still have not resolved the issues. And number four, this is the one, true, genuine. This is where we become accountable for our actions. These are the difficult conversations. The ones that I hope you have created a safe place inside of your relationships. Now, if you've not heard my conversation on a safe place, take the time to visit my podcast or my YouTube channel, and you can locate those by visiting ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Now, I can't leave this conversation on forgiveness without talking about the most important step to creating forgiveness, and that is forgiving the person in the mirror. Yes, you. I was talking with my new friend, Kaylin, and the person that introduced us, Adrian, on a call yesterday. Yes, I'm sending out a shot. Now, this was one of our topics. When a person's equipped and they know a subject and they know what they should be doing, see, they have the answers, but they're still not doing it. They're even harder on themselves. Learn to forgive yourself Give yourself a break. Quit tearing yourself down because that's never a good solution. This is also why it's important to surround yourself with a solid supporting cast. Now, let's address that portion of the statement where I mentioned that you need to know what's your destination. Where are you going to end up? You have to take a stance and decide which of these patterns that you will decide to follow. Now, this was also I got from Hassani's talk. Now, he was saying that there's three different patterns that take place, but he was talking about after fidelity. Now, I'm bringing it up because I believe it holds true regardless in the subject of forgiveness. Pattern number one is the sufferers. 
Those are the people that will not release you or anyone from the story or any incident from that point forward. Everything is linked to the original pain and therefore they'll continue to suffer. Now, I believe this is what people do to themselves. You keep writing the same story and you make it worse by adding other painful incidents to it. And then you expect the outcome to be different. Number two, the builders. These are the people that may seek help from a counselor, books, but they're not willing to make the necessary changes in themselves. And of course, they become stuck. Now, how many of you can relate to this? You ask the question, why do I keep attracting the same person? Why is it I can't get out of this rut? Number three, the adventurers, the explorers. They will not let the pain or challenges define who they are and are willing to be held accountable and create a new version of themselves, which creates a better relationship. And as you guys know, this is all I talk about on Self Love Monday is creating a better version of you. If you do this and learn to forgive yourself, it becomes easier to forgive others. By the way, for those of you that this topic hasn't clicked in yet in terms of forgiveness, I want you to remember the young man above that didn't realize that he needed to ask for forgiveness for his actions because he was spending too much time living in victimhood. And as the historian Thomas Fuller said, he that cannot forgive others breaks the bridges over which he must pass himself. Bottom line, don't ask from others what you're not willing to do yourself. So in closing this segment, the plan of action is to make sure you practice the conversation with the mirror. And the three statements that you're going to do are one, Ron, of course, use your name. I am proud of you for. The second statement is, Ron, I forgive you for. Ah, that word, forgive. And three, Ron, I commit to you. And make sure you add seven different endings at the, at the end of the statement. Now, do this exercise for 21 days, although you can do it for the rest of your life if you want to, and especially when you get down on yourself. Other things you can do in addition to the mirror exercise is begin a journal. Do not try to be professional in your journals. <laughs> do not worry about your I's being dotted, your T's being crossed, just write. And for some of you, turn on the recorder and just let it rip. Get everything out. And lastly, for some of you, write a letter. Ask the person for forgiveness. Get everything out on paper. Uh, don't hold back. And the reason for this is to get everything off your chest. Now, you've heard people say that they do this and then they bury the letter or they burn the letter. It's just a sim symbolic gesture. You can do that or you could actually send it to them. Just remember, life is too short and we need to get all this stuff cleared out. So as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, I look forward to seeing you guys on uh, Self Love Monday and also back here on Relationship Thursday. And just remember, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Make sure you realize that you are valuable and you are enough and you don't allow anyone else's perception of you to cause you to believe anything different. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.